What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we're gonna check out 10 WWE stars who won their first championships in terrible matches, man. Uh, it's kind of an unfortunate situation for you to win your first championship in the matches, kind of lackluster, man. And uh, it, it, it definitely sets the tone for your title reign. But ultimately, you know, if you can have a, a string of good matches and good views, it can change the overall perception of your title reign. And, and that's, in my opinion, what makes a good title reign is the feuds that you have, the matches that come with those feuds, you know. So it all can be forgiven if the first title you win or, you know, the match that it was in wasn't that good. All can be forgiven if the feud, you know, works in over time the matches get better so we gotta check this out appreciate all the love and support you guys have been WWE going crazy likes damn i was just started on his own you guys have been going crazy with the support thank you so much man uh we're almost at 80k it's crazy even saying that um but let's get right into this i think they're a company that makes dreams come true nightmares are dreams after all but it's no secret that the dream of many young wwe fans is to win a wwe championship mm -hmm. in the main event of wrestlemania or something to that effect Yep. Pyro, Ballyhoo, Pomp, Circumstance. When all of these things are combined with a great match, you can really make a title win feel special. Brock Lesnar capturing the WWE title from The Rock, Daniel Bryan overcoming his former pro to win the United States Championship. Mmm, delectable stuff. However, while winning your first title may be a dream come true for some, for others it was a night they would like to forget. Not all title wins are created equal, and sometimes a mm -hmm. WWE star's first title win is so bad, it needs to be eternally sunshined away from our collective spotless minds. I'm Tempest, hailing from Parts Fun Known, and these are 10 WWE stars who won their first championships in terrible matches. Personally, I would like to thank everybody who has subscribed to Parts Fun Known over the years as we just Definitely. passed 200,000 subscribers oh, awesome, over Definitely. WrestleMania weekend. And Definitely that will subscribe never not to be him, nuts to me. That's so awesome. Thank you to everybody who subscribed. And if you aren't subscribed, well, hop on board. We're heading to 250. Number 10, The Undertaker, Survivor Series 1991. Mm. Just one year after sauntering down to the ring for the first time at Survivor Series 1990, Jeremy, your only form of hellish entertainment, finally got a title shot against WWE Champion Hulk Hogan at Survivor Series 1991. Hogan certainly was not known for 20 minute classics, but under the right circumstances and with the right opponent, a great match could be had. A 1991 full on zombified Undertaker was not the right opponent and these were not the right circumstances. There's a lot of face squeezing, as was the <laughs> style of Undertaker matches at the time. Hogan takes a tombstone and completely no sells it, immediately <laughs> popping to his feet and hulking up as my eyes glaze over. Yep. Hulk was uh, definitely known. For uh, sometimes no selling someone's ultimate move, and he just gets up. You <laughs> like, yo, bro, stay down for a little bit, sell my shit. Over watching the fakest bit of WWE programming from 1991. The Undertaker's style evolved over his 30 year career, mm -hmm. but this match was the worst of both his and Hogan's styles at the time. He may be a Hall of Famer now, but it's crazy to think that it would take 16 more years before The Undertaker would win a world title in a good match. Number nine, Damn. Batista, Armageddon 2003. That's right, kids, this list is not limited to just world titles, meaning for folks like Batista, you have to venture back to Armageddon 2003 to find the first time Big Dave won some leather and gold. The title in question was the World Tag Team Championship, which old Sapper Morton won with Evolution mentor Ric Flair. Batista still calls this one of his two favorite moments of his career, the other was WrestleMania 21, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, this title win came at the end of WWE's favorite answer to not wanting to book a tag team feud, a tag team turmoil match. Fun. <laughs> WWE loved doing these in the Ruthless Aggression era, and they're just like all gauntlet matches. If they're given time, they have a chance to be good. If they didn't, well, you get the picture. This one featured the all-star lineup of teams Rosie and Hurricane, Rene Dupree and Rob Conway, Garrison Cade and Mark Jindrak, Lance Storm and Val Venus, Scott Steiner and Test, and the Dudleys. This match never had a chance of being good, with mm -mm. six little mini matches being crammed into 15 <laughs> minutes and 48 seconds. If you only judge from when Batista and Flair enter, it's an inoffensive four minute match, but you have to include this dreadful preamble and had Dave not had to wrestle Shawn Michaels earlier in the night, he and Rick against the Dudleys in a straight tag match would have been much better. Number eight, Braun mm. Strowman. True, true, hey, but once again, it ultimately helped him, you know, to become the animal that we knew, you know, knew him to be, that whole evolution experience helped him, you know, be 
the the form, you know, the champion that he he wanted to be, and pretty much the company was definitely backing him, you know. But he had to have he had to get groomed. So of course, sometimes you end up situ- situations where matches may not have been that good when you win your first championship. It happens. WrestleMania 34. Oh, speaking of tag team matches that sucked, Braun uh, Strowman got far more over than anyone expected him to in 2017, simply by pushing Roman Reigns off of things, and to <laughs> yep. be fair, that was the dream of a large portion of the WWE yes. audience at the time, which resulted in a very high-profile oh, match with Brock Lesnar at No Mercy 2017 for the Universal title. That match wasn't great either, but it certainly felt important. The yeah. same cannot be said for the Strowman's actual first title win, which I had genuinely blocked out of my memory prior to writing this raw tag champions the bar were challenged by braun Strowman. And- you know what you he's right that was his first title win when he teamed up with like an 11 year old i forgot all about that i could have sworn he had another title before that no that was his first wow and a mystery partner at wrestlemania 34 Ooh, mystery partners are fun. I wonder who it'll be. Maybe an NXT call-up, maybe a repackaged character. Confusion broke out as Braun said he was picking someone out of the crowd to be his partner. Certainly intriguing, considering if he was in the right section, he could have selected Hiroshi Tanahashi, Kazuchika Okada, or Minoru Suzuki, any of whom would have made sure this match did not appear on this list. But rather, no, Braun chose the nine-year-old. People okay, overuse he's the word burial in wrestling too much these days, but a single star and a child beating the tag champs just to give the belt back the next day anyway is as much a burial as this was a match yeah i no <laughs> i get it that's a moment i believe he, uh the uh, the kid was uh one of the wrestlers son sons i, I want to say i could be wrong correct me if i'm wrong and i'm sure that's an awesome moment he will never forget but no those are the raw tag team titles they it was literally they they didn't feel important. They felt like toys. And I didn't know that was Braun's first title, like, win. I didn't even realize Number seven, that. Forgot. John Cena, WrestleMania 20. From one uh, WrestleMania moment to a significantly better one, John Cena managed to capture his first United States Championship mm-hmm. from the big show at WrestleMania 20. This match is remembered for two reasons. It's Cena's first title win, and holy hell, yeah. that is a human waterbed engulfing Cena's shoulders. Yeah, Watching F- people you. lift Big Show will never not be impressive, no matter how many times Cena has done it. And as impressive as a moment that is, unfortunately, the match that precedes it is about as dull a WrestleMania. Yeah, that's that's really the only thing people remember. He won it there, and he F-U'd uh, the Big Show. That was it. And that's when Cena was getting over. So it wasn't that much of a, uh, a wrestling clinic. But that's really the only thing people remember that match for. The opener as you can get. Cena was far from a polished worker at the time. And Big Show wasn't exactly the ring general to pull a classic out of an inexperienced Cena. It's a nine minute slog and not the best way to kick off one of the most legendary championship careers in WWE history. But the moment will live forever because that is just too big of a show to be on John's shoulders. Yeah. Number six, Natalia, Survivor Series 2010. Has there been another WWE women's wrestler with as bizarre a career as Natalia? She's been there for 14 years, farted a bunch, has generally been beaten like a drum when at mm-hmm. all possible, all the while being maybe WWE's most reliable women's wrestler of her generation pre-NXT. Natalia has rarely been used as the focus of the division, nope. only winning two singles titles, and it really is a shame the first one came during a time like this. During the Lay Cool Reign of Terror on SmackDown, Natalia was forced to wrestle both Layla and Michelle McCool in a handicap match for the Bratz belt at Survivor Series the Bratz belt. Considering this was smack dab in the middle of WWE's What's Women's Wrestling Never Heard of It phase, mm-hmm. it should come as no surprise that the match only went three minutes. Yep. Natalia would have much better matches for titles later in her career. Uh, and this I really remember is more- them butterfly belts. They were just... I did not care for those belts. They were... Easily one of the worst looking belts WWE ever created. But they were treated, they, they're literally toys. Because they didn't care about the women's division. I'm glad the women's division have belts that look like something. That, the Butterfly Diva belt, get that, ugh, disgusting. More of a sign of the times than anything else. 
Number five, Kurt Angle, SmackDown, February 10th, 2000. Now I will be honest, terrible is a bit of a stretch for this one. There isn't anything egregiously wrong with Kurt Angle's first title win, but something about one of the best wrestlers of all time winning the European Championship from Val Venus in a short, heatless match just doesn't sit right with me. Kirk Angel was still an incredibly fresh face to the WWE audience, so much so that they didn't get the memo that they were watching one of the greats, instead treating mm -hmm. this like an average mid-card performance. Unfortunately, it kind of was. This was only like five minutes with nothing of interest happening. I mean, if you can find a way to be at all interest in anything Val Venus does, then you have a stronger will than I. <laughs> Fans didn't even pop for the finish because they weren't familiar with Kurt's finisher yet. On the plus side, Kurt celebrates like he wins the Stanley Cup after winning the European Championship, which is funny because it's the European Championship. Number 4, Cesaro, SummerSlam 2012. It was a different time when Antonio Cesaro stepped onto the WWE mm -hmm. scene in 2012. The Shield had not yet arrived, Daniel Bryan's yes chants were only starting to take off, and the landscape of WWE was not designed for independent stars like Cesaro one could argue that it never was. But by SummerSlam 2012, Cesaro was set to become United States Champion, a pretty solid step for someone only a few months in. The only problem was he had to wrestle Santino Morella for it. Santino fucking Morella. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's Santino, you can't, you can't take him, you can't take him seriously, it's San fucking Tino. Was he funny? Yes, he's, he's like our truth except I think R-Truth is funnier, and R-Truth actually had some pretty, the stuff he did with John Cena, that was actually pretty entertaining, that was a nice little feud, and the stuff he was doing with The Miz, that was pretty cool, I was I was enjoying that, but Santino, it's fucking Santino. Right, and if you needed less of a reason to see it, it was also on the kickoff show. It's not like the two don't try, but it's a five minute match on the pre-show, not exactly the type of match yeah. that gets out of first gear. Not to mention the sheer lunacy of the wrestler's wrestler Cesaro having to deal with Santino's stupid Cobra sock puppet yeah. being attracted to Oksana against Santino's will. What makes this <laughs> really problem is that in his 10 years on the main roster, this was Cesaro's only singles title win, fighting a sock. Are you serious? Are you serious? Nah, I gotta run that back. There's no way. This was Cesaro's only no, 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 no. pressing. Is that in his 10 years on the main roster, this was Cesaro's only singles title win. Fight. Wow. He. Wow. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's awful. I don't even... Yeah, that's awful. Fighting a sock. Number three, Sami Zayn, Elimination Chamber that's 2020. That's awful. No, I'm For being a long so time, serious. it seemed as if Sami Zayn would go his entire WWE main roster run without winning a championship of any kind. Title shots weren't exactly plentiful, and the ones that did come his way, such as WWE Championship matches in 2018, proved unfruitful. It wasn't until Elimination Chamber 2020 that Sami finally got his hands on some gold for the first time, and they sure picked some interesting circumstances to make it happen in, didn't they? Sami was part of the Artist Collective at the time, a group of misfit great wrestlers without a home or purpose, and they were determined to retrieve the Intercontinental Championship from the clutches of Bronny the Strowman. Where this gets strange is at Elimination Chamber, all three artists collectively face Strowman in a three on one handicap match for the title. Zayn was the one who managed to get the pin and win the title, but not before nine minutes of three exciting wrestlers wearing down a giant in the least exciting manner possible. <laughs> Seriously, the crowd barely makes a sound. Damn. Maybe they were all lost in a trance thinking about how they wouldn't be allowed outside in a week's time. When you consider Sammy's first title win could have been a beating Kevin Owens for the IC title, the US title, or the Universal title, all of which would have been excellent, this match becomes a little bit harder to swallow. I don't know why they didn't go with that. Uh, Sammy's Zane would have been the perfect perp they they have so much great history. Ah WWE man, they they just they don't even realize the the type of talent they have on their roster. Number two, they don't cry back. Or don't care. Chamber twenty five. Oh no, not Terrible cry back. Might be a strong word for some of the matches on not this list. Cry back. Some are short, underwhelming, uninteresting. 
but we are officially in train wreck territory folks watching every single elimination chamber match earlier this year for the every elimination chamber participant ranked list gave me a fun perspective watching all the matches through today's eyes some were better than i remembered some were about the same and some were just as butt ass garbage as i remembered i'll give you three guesses which category this one falls under we've talked about this match a lot lately but the spark notes are mark henry's pod pops open before it's supposed to the match falls apart Dolph says, it's just a little train wreck, it's still good, it's still good, and tries to put the pieces back together, it doesn't work, Seamus acts like he's stuck, and finally and mercifully Ryback wins. To date, this is the only championship Ryback ever won in WWE. Wow. If he wants to show anyone that time Ryback won a belt, they will have to sit through this match, and well, I don't think they would want to do that. Well, hey, hey he, at least he won something. He's, he's, <laughs> he's still complaining on twitter but hey hey cryback at least you won the intercontinental championship in a uh trash ass elimination chamber match so congrats my guy <laughs> you're forever a legend <laughs> and number one the big show halloween havoc 1995 and we close out our list with something so absurd and so inconceivably terrible that we have to allow for another promotion to step in for the top. <laughs> before he was Tall Paul, before he was the Big Show, he was simply known as the Giant, supposedly the son of Andre the Giant, who elected mm. to use his father's middle and last names, but decided to forego <laughs> a first name. At Halloween Havoc 1995, the Giant not only won his first championship, but it was the WCW World Championship, and he did it in his very first ever match. That sounds impressive, right? Well, that's only the bare bones facts. First, they started by yelling, I am Monster Truck, at each other while driving around a rooftop in a Monster Truck sumo match. Don't get any ideas, NXT 2.0. Then, the giant is pushed off the roof and seemingly killed, only to walk out to the arena about 10 minutes later without a scratch on him, with commentary explaining that he fell in the Detroit River next to Cobo Hall. A more ridiculous explanation than even the second smaller roof at Money in the Bank 2020. Once it's in the ring, things settle down for a bit, and then you had what may have been the worst ending to a pay-per-view of all time. As Jimmy Hart turns on Hulk Hogan, Savage and Luger come out to make the save, Luger immediately turns on Savage, and finally, a man taller than Big Show wrapped and toilet paper comes out and gyrates on Hulk Hogan. What? Somehow, some way, all of that utter tomfoolery resulted in the giant winning the WCW championship by disqualification. <laughs> I have a first night on the job, tall Paul. But seriously, can someone tell me what in the blue hell is a yet tay? And that's our list. If you like this video, make <laughs> I sure you don't even like know what out. to say to that. <laughs> uh, WCW, man. <laughs> they. They had some interesting uh, things going on <laughs> towards their later years for sure. <laughs> that's oh wow, that's that's crazy, man. But I I think the most shocking thing for me in this video is knowing that Cesaro only won the United States Championship as a, a single championship. He's never won nothing else outside of that. Did not even know that. He's only won one. That's 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 crazy, man. But comment down below. Let me know which uh, which one, one of these title terrible matches do you guys actually remember watching? And <laughs> was it really that bad to watch? Because I don't think I've watched any of these matches except maybe the John Cena one. I remember watching that. I didn't watch none of these matches I've actually watched. Actual. <laughs> I didn't watch that Elimination Chamber match. I didn't care for it. None of these matches I actually watched except the John Cena one. I remember that one. And I remember it was just being... I remember it only because of the the, the FU to, uh, to the big show. But comment down below. Let me know if you guys remember any of these matches. Remember watching them. How did you feel when you watched it when it happened? But appreciate all the love support. Row 2, ADK. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one.